Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. Today I'm going to show you how you can implement a very cool grid of composables in Jetpack Compose. And that is actually a lazy grid. So that means that it only shows, it only composes and shows these items that are actually on the screen. So it won't process the others and it will then, yep, yeah, just start displaying the items as soon as we scroll and we'll start hiding the, those that leave the screen. That is just the, the concept of calling something a lazy. We also have a lazy column and a lazy row, as you probably know, but this one will be a lazy vertical grid and it's actually super easy to implement that. So let's jump into our studio, just an empty Jetpack Compose project and see how that would work. As I said, it's called a lazy a vertical grid which is this composable here that anybody of you can use and it takes on the one hand a cells parameter on the other hand it takes a content parameter if we use a lazy column then we know that content parameter that's of course what we need to put into this um, lazy column so how we want each item to look like basically however with the lazy vertical grid we of course need to give it some kind of information about how each grid cell looks like and how we want them to behave. And that is what we do with this oops, um, cells parameter. In the end, we have two options that we could choose from here. On the one hand, we have grid cells dot fixed. So if we want to always have a fixed amount of columns in our grid, so we could set this to, for example, five. And you can see we get a bunch of errors here, by the way, we can press Alt plus enter. And add this experimental foundation API to main activity. That's just a notation that, yeah, the Google team says this is not fully stable yet. It is experimental and it might change. However, um, I think I've used this a year ago and uh, yeah, even then it had this an annotation or we had to add this. Uh, yeah, Google likes to add this and keep it for years. <laughs> so I, I think it's pretty, pretty, um, pretty fine to use that in your projects. However, these grid cells here with this fixed class we have the option to give it a fixed count a fixed amount of uh, columns so if we do it like this that would mean we would have five columns in our grid no matter how wide our grid actually is the alternative to this would be adaptive with adaptive we need to specify a minimum size and that will actually be a dp value so whatever value we enter here for example 100 dp will be taken as the size for our grid for so, so for each grid cell so if we do it this way then let's say we rotate our screen and we have more space so because our screen is of course wider in landscape mode so we could also fit in more grid cells and it will now um, make sure that it will at least make each cell 100 dp wide but it will make sure that it will actually fill the whole width of the grid so let's just um, implement this here um, like the rest and then we will see the differences here in action which i think is better to understand how this works in here it's just like with the lazy column we just specify an items block and here i'll just have 100 items and get get reference to each index here using i and in the end, you can also just take a look at the source code of the lazy vertical grid. If we uh, hold control and click on this lazy vertical grid, then you will see something pretty interesting. And that is, you can see, um, that is how it's implemented. And all it does here is it, it distinguishes whether your cells parameter is actually fixed or adaptive. And then it uses this fixed lazy grid, which is another composable. We can again hold control and click on that. We get to this composable and what do we see here? Well, it's nothing else but a lazy column that just gets modified a little bit with some rows and some calculations and also some columns and some calculations. So it's in the end just a lazy column that consists of rows with your composables. And you could of course do the same on your own, but the lazy vertical grid just takes away all this calculation from you. So in here, I would just like to have a simple box that centers the text. We can pass a modifier of modifier. Yeah, let's say we want to have an aspect ratio of 1F. So it's just a square. Let's give it some padding before of let's say 8 dp. So we have a little bit of spacing between our items. We can then say, okay, 
we might want to clip this to maybe a rounded corner shape of 5 dB. So we have 5 dB rounded corners. And then let's give it a background color of color green. Then we can say we want to center the content using content alignment is alignment.center. And we can open the content block of this box. We can then simply specify a text and we say item number i. And that is now just how each item in our grid looks like. It's the same as with a lazy column, just that you now have to think in a grid style kind of. So if we now actually launch this app here, take a look here and wait until it is launched, you can see now each item will have a minimum width of actually 100 dp. Might be wider here. It will just figure out a nice width for each item so that these um, perfectly fit into this, uh, into our width here of our screen. And if we now actually rotate our device, then you can see the width of each item will actually stay exactly the same. And that is in the end what Adaptive does here. If we go here and we change this back to fixed and we say we want five columns no matter what and we launch this, then we see, okay, we have five columns, but if we now rotate it, you can see we still have five columns, but now each item is actually bigger. So depending on your use case, you might want to either use fixed or adaptive here for the cell style. And one more thing that might be interesting here to talk about is that you can also pass a state, which is in the end a lazy list state as well. So the same type of state we can pass to a lazy column. So we can say val state is remember lazy list state. And then we can pass that here. And with that, we can just manipulate, for example, we could programmatically scroll to some kind of index of our list of our grid, or we could simply pass um, an initial, uh, for initial first visible item index. So if we do that and we say, okay, we actually set that to 99, which is the last index in our list, and we launch our app, then what we should see is, okay, we actually, we actually now scroll completely to the bottom of our grid, and we can now scroll up. And you could of course also do that programmatically that you have a button and you click on that. And then in that button on click, you would say state dot animate scroll to item. And you could say, okay, I now want to animate scrolling to index 99 or to some other kind of index. And to make sure that you don't miss the next video in this important Android fundamentals playlist, simply click here.